This video is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock. Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena, I want this card to be good. I really do. So, we're forcing it. We're putting four Liliana Waker of the Dead in a deck and we're trying to make a good discard deck. We're going to try to use the Liliana Waker of the Dead plus one in a way that's effective. Inspired by a Deck Doctor stream where I was sent this deck and then the very next day on Patreon I was sent almost the same deck and it's very much like people want Liliana to be good. I get it. I do too. And I like the idea of using some graveyard synergies with Croxa. Like if you can make it so putting cards in your graveyard is good, that's one way to make Liliana okay, but you're still spending four mana to kind of mill yourself one from your hand, which isn't that great, and make the opponent discard the worst card in their hand, and it's only five loyalty. It's just, there's a lot of things wrong with the card. So this is deck is an attempt to fix the things wrong with a complicated card, because I think the biggest mistake that people make is they just cram all the discard cards into a deck. And the problem with the discard cards, I'm going to lay it out like this. You play your cards, you make your opponent discard their cards. Your Duress, your Agonizing Remorse, your Burglar Rat, your Yarg's Fen Lurker. Good job. Your opponent's probably got like four or five land, maybe a creature on the battlefield, and they've discarded their whole hand. Now you can get to the work of like trying to pick them to death with your rats and stuff. But here's the problem. On your turn, you draw another discard card, whether it's a burglar rat, whether it's a duress, whatever. The opponent has no hand. So if you have a Liliana and you plus it, maybe they take three, that's good. But like your card doesn't do much. It's, it's just a one, one. Now on your opponent's turn, they untap, they draw off the top, they have some lands because they played their discard situation properly and they draw like a questing beast or a regisaur or a lovestruck beast or something with significant power and toughness, an annex, a torbran, a mayhem devil, whatever you want to call it. And they played this card. Okay, now that's threatening your Liliana. Maybe it bites into their loyalty right away if it's a mayhem devil with a cat oven or a questing beast. You untap, you draw. Guess what? It's another discard card. They have no cards in their hand, and now you can't beat their board. That's why, if you're going to disrupt your opponent with discard, you have to get them dead. You have to. They, you have to take the moment where they've lost a few of those key cards from their hand, and you have to crush them in that moment. So, we hug a frickin' dinosaur. That's how we get them dead. Or we play Rankle. Um, this, this deck has a few key cards to make our discard effects better. We don't run Duress, we don't run Agonizing Remorse. We run the Fen Lurker and the Rat because as creatures, we can make these a little bit better by running Demonic Embrace and Rankle. Rankle lets us sacrifice our creatures, forces the opponent to sacrifice a probably better creature. Demonic Embrace, we put that on these and their body is significant. Like we, we make it so our discard effects in the late game aren't just garbage, even if they're really close to garbage. Also, we have to pick on the opponent's graveyard, so we have some Timret chosen from death, also really good at getting hugged. And we have the Liliana's Triumph, because if we control Liliana, they have to discard a card and sacrifice a creature. It is really cool if you ever get to do it. You can play this in the draw step, so the opponent gets has to discard their card before they get to play it, and they have to sacrifice a creature, but that's only if Waker of the Dead is on the field. And then Gutter Bones, because you can get it back. You can discard it to Liliana or Regisaur and buy it back later. And Disfigure, because the deck falls behind too quickly. And you don't have time for your discard effects to matter if the opponent plays 1-drop, 2-drop, 3-drop and runs you over. So Disfiguring their 2-drop, often uh, pretty crucial, honestly. Um, I tried with like Grasp of Darkness and Eliminate, and Disfigure was a lot better. So I'm sticking with it, because the meta is just so low to the ground, we may as well play it. Okay, I think I've introduced the deck. Hopefully I've explained to you why most discard decks fail, why I'm not running garbage like Davriel, why I'm not running Agonizing Remorse and Duress, because we're not doing surgical discard, we're doing complete and utter total discard, where we, we want to knock every card out of our opponent's hand. Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. 
hopefully you guys will stop sending me decks that are like 20 discard spells and nothing that kills the opponent because this is what you should be playing. Hopefully it helps. All right, let's dive in. Let the nonsense begin. Ooh, His hand is not great. Being on the draw in general is pretty rough, but at least we have two removal spells. I'll give it a try. Rat's a little bit better on the draw because your opponent has less cards, and this opponent's on a mulligan. But, Hell Collector, best one drop in the game. Really good against Liliana's Triumph. They cheat so much. How do they do it? Disfigure. Good draw. So next turn the opponent plays the Beast. We can disfigure the Pelt Collector. Triumph can probably hit the 1-1. One, one. So let's get a rat on the field. Yeah, I think Rankle will have a good shot at taking over this game. Gem Razor. The opponent still hit three land drops pretty smoothly. Let's see if they want to attack with the other 1-1. One, one. Nope. So, Disfigure on Pelt Collector is good. And then Liliana's Triumph takes out one of these, and then Rankle can sacrifice the rat next turn. Let's get this done now, in case of some giant growthy effect. Full Harpooner, that has reach. That's a problem. That's a big problem. How are we going to get rid of that? The opponent might sacrifice it to the Triumph here. Which I guess would be nice. Because then Rankle gets in. If they sacrifice the 1-1, one, one, they can't attack with the 5-5. Five, five, so we sort of give up 5 life here. But we do it on purpose. We wanted to clear the way for Rankle. Demonic Embrace. Demon Hug Achieved. Alright. Each player uh, discards a card. We'll discard the Embrace. Each player sacrifices a creature. Let's not do the card draw thing. So this can go. We can always get it back later. At the cost of a card that we don't need. Opponent gives up a Nissa. That feels nice. And now the opponent has to give up the Lovestruck Beast or the token. Without the token, the beast can't attack. And they kept some kind of fight spell, it looks like. That's mean. But... We will get their last card. You're mine. All right, another Primal Might down. We could triumph away the beast, but I think we get the Tamaret down. Give him the face. Yell at him. Another Rankle, that's awesome. That's freaking awesome. Each player sacrifices a creature. No need to pick any of the other modes right now. Shall we hug it out? Let's hug it out. Click yourself to pay the life, discard the card. And let's uh, just be done. No effects necessary. Opponent finds a questing beast. That's not good enough. I think they're just raging at me. Get that beast out of here. Just for the flex. You flex on me, I flex on you. Got him. Mono black. Those frickin' rats did good work. Alright, it's a good curve with a demon hug. Let's do it. See if Disfigure has some sweet targets. Yes, it does. It has some sweet targets. So, playing a rat right now doesn't probably hit anything relevant. Playing a Disfigure could get rid of the knight. Let's attack, see if the opponent wants to trade. I would take the trade. Okay, nice. So, they're playing defensively like they're up in cards. The rat can help even that out, because once we embrace it, it becomes a real threat. And then we can get gutter bones back. Beanstalk giant? They're black green? Is this an adventure deck? I might be really happy I get to save some of these things. 
I see. Order of the Midnight. They are going to try to grind us out. I think rather than embrace the rat, I should just get back and play the gutter bones. The opponent traded the knight last time. They might try to do it again. If we are going to fight a card advantage war, I better make sure to get the cards when I when it's possible. So, what do we expect? Casualties of war? I suppose. Ooh. Not great, though. It's not good against Murderous Rider, particularly. I guess I could make them have it. I definitely don't want to discard a lot of cards, though, against this opponent. I think we slow roll this dinosaur. Let's disfigure the knight. Let's embrace the gutter bones. Punch our opponent in the face. If they remove gutter bones, like we can get gutter bones back and we can get embrace back. I think the dinosaur is just gonna die if we run it out there. So let's try to get the opponent to make some plays to pave the way and let's try to empty their hand. I'll feel a lot better playing the dinosaur once we empty their hand. We have a lot of discard effects. Oh no. Oh no. We disfigured the knight and then they pulled out the innkeeper. Oh, that's pretty good because they can't block. That's really good. All right. What you got? Down to four. So, how do we play this? I think we do the draw thing, and the discard thing, and the sacrifice thing. Yeah, I think we do it all. We want to increase the clock. Having the opponent at three could be a big deal later. And we'll discard the Regisaur? No, let's discard the Triumph. The opponent has a lot of fodder creatures. The fodder is not quite where it's at in this matchup. The Liliana's Triumph, I mean. Play this out, say go. See if the opponent can answer the Flyers. Casualties of War won't do it. Actually, it will. Because they can blow up the Embrace and the Rankle. But then we can play the Embrace from the Graveyard. Wouldn't do it. Ooh. If either one hits, we win. They could have a way to remove an enchantment at instant speed. I'm trying to... De I'm debating whether or not to play the Embrace. I don't think we do. Let's go for it. And that's game. That's a handful of mismatched mono black trash, is what it is. Like <laughs> the only rare card here is gutter bones. I'll keep it. Um, it's really weird to see a hand like this. No Liliana, no demonic embrace, no rotting Regisar. It makes me wonder what the heck am I playing? Our opponent opens with the true like symbol of power, which is blue green tap land. Probably a growth spiral. I'm sure that would surprise everyone. Let's attack. Let's spend Lurk. Yeah, we're probably going to be too slow here. These are definitely not the matchups we want to fight with the deck. Like, you just can't usually win a discard battle against a deck that plays Gross Spiral. Hmm, Flash though. So they exiled an Ambusher. Maybe against Flash it's better. Like, they don't usually play Hydroid Crisis. They usually play a lot of one for ones, and they discarded a frickin' Ambusher. That means they have another one. Yeah, they're gonna take it. And then we'll just say go, I think. Like, we don't want to rewind into them resolving an Ambusher and then not be able to kill it. And they know with mana open I might just kill their Ambusher, so they might not play it. Yeah. But, ooh, they're stuck on land? Okay. Two Triumphs now? They're gonna have to play it eventually. I'm gonna keep knocking their life total down. 
Raisin Borrower. Sure, I want them to counter this disfigure. So let's let that resolve and then let them untap and then try to disfigure on their turn. I want them to counter it. They might play a rewind, I suppose. But that's one less card in their hand. Yep, they let it go. Smart. Well, you know, Triumph's looking boss in this game. Just saying. Like, how much of this can you take? They're trying to be patient. How about a Gutter Bones? You want to counter that? No, they don't. There's... All right, now this we have to kill. So we're going to do this on the end step while they are tapped out. All right, wolf down. They could have a third, remember? This Fenlurker exiled one early. So that wouldn't surprise me. What you gonna do? How low are you willing to go to a couple of skeletons and all some swampy horror? They're ranked 395, they're like, no. This was my moment, my great ascension. Sure. Down is punch the mic. All right. They don't have rewind available anymore, so we probably want to play some stuff. We could play around a quench by going for this first. So let's do it. Resolves. All right. Give them the give them the screamy face. Give them the gutter bones. They play the borrower. But that can't block anything, and we have a lethal attack coming at them. I think we're putting on a good show of how to play around rewind and how to play against Simic Flash. Get some creatures down. Be satisfied to attack with them. That doesn't block. What what are you doing here? Hoping I play Demonic Embrace? That's not good. Alright, Frilled Mystic coming in hot. Now it's dead. And that's game. Oh, that's a curve of pain and beauty. Our opponent with American flag sleeves. Easy mono red. Maybe not. But we'll see. Sup, Murica? What you got? Oh, not even close. America, land of weapons of mass destruction. It's gotta play Deafening Clarions and Elspeth Conquers Death and Shatter the Sky, right? We shall see. Earth. What do you guys think? Do we go Dino? I think we go Dino Hug. Make him shatter it. And then follow up with Rankle. But what am I discarding next turn? The Embrace? I don't really want to discard any of this stuff. If I Embrace right now, we get more damage, right? If the opponent plays Teferi and bounces this, like with this, this walks right into Teferi, like badly. So if they're going to bounce something, I want them to bounce the Fenlurker. So let's put the Embrace here and hit him. Okay, not a Teferi. Love it. You love to see a second Rankle. Backup Rankle. Reporting for duty. So making them discard doesn't really matter. They have these planes. Let's just do the draw and the life. And we'll also do the sacrifice, I guess. They have to give up a wall. That could be relevant later. All right, down to four with Rankle in hand, but they're going up to six. 
Let's see. Shatter to fairy. Let's make this. That's annoying. The phasing thing is going to be rough. Well, who do you phase? Phases the rankle. Makes sense. Uh, I think we put the opponent at two, then they go up to four. We still make them deal with these because these are both lethal threats. So ignore Teferi. Try to get him dead. We're one off of lethal there though. We could have pumped this, but not enough. All right, let's play the dino. Let's get back the bones. Because if the opponent shatters now, we get rankle. See if you can get out of this one. Elspeth Conqueror's death isn't enough. There it is. But you're gonna die. Oh my blue my blue white brethren. It hurts to smash you so brutally. But not really. There are people out there who always hate blue white, so let them have it. Let them get this win. This beautiful win. USA, USA. On the draw, hopefully Disfigure and the Rats are good. Actually, these are pretty good on the draw, like I said, because the opponent has less cards, and this opponent's also on a mulligan. Miscreant, huh? Do we kill it? I think we kill a Watcher. So let's not play the Gutter Bones. Let's take it nice and slow. Yep, there's the Watcher. It's like I know what's in these decks because I play them and then I play against them a lot. Anyway, Fenny, Fenny. The Demonic Embrace is a good draw. It means we can trade away our rats uh, and Fen Lurkers, block things in the air. Although we'd rather throw the embrace on the gutter bones, probably, because we can get it back, but we'll see. You have to be willing to turn into the control deck as we have in this game so far, because this deck can uh, fall behind very quickly. Oh, you play Skycat Sovereign. I guess you disagreed with me on that choice. Let's threaten the pump on the Fen Lurker here. That's why we attack first. Keep hitting the hand. Keep hitting the hand. Peggy. All right, yeah, it's a different build. Still likes Watcher of the Spheres, though. I hated this card, and then I played with it, and then I loved this card. Interesting, what are they holding? What are they holding? I think I wanna play another rat, but maybe I, you know, it could be another Brazen Borrower. That would be a good reason to play a rat and not the embrace. The opponent doesn't want to borrow any of these things, and we want to get the borrower out of their hand. Okay, another lofty, like a lofty denial on the rat. Spiteful. Do you think they have another one? I think they might. Let's see if this resolves, because it will determine what we want to attack with. We'll put it on the Burglar Rat, because if they bounce that, playing it again, we get their last card. I mean, this is a race they could definitely win. They have cards like Rally. I have my, my Amplifier is Demonic Embrace, and I have Rankle, which I haven't found. All right, that resolved. I'll attack with these two. If the opponent, what can they flash in? If they want to trade with Fen Lurker, that's fine. If they want to trade with Gutter Bones, that's fine. And now I have a blocker, which the opponent might borrow. I would expect them to borrow it. Yep. And they get their Eagle, and they got their last card out of their hand, so a timely land draw. And that gains life. But I don't know if it's good enough. This is 8 damage, and the opponent's at 12. 
We could go to three and have one blocker. That's not good enough. I can survive one more turn with the Timoret, and then we have to draw what? Removal? I guess so. If I pump this, the opponent might... I guess I have to try to bluff my way through this, right? The opponent might not block. Yep. Oh, I don't have enough. No, I do have enough. I have I have enough to exile four creatures, right? One life for each creature. One, two, three. Oh, I'm a creature short? All right, I only need three life. I just need to get up to nine. Okay. Go. I'm not sure what I could draw, but maybe if the opponent taps out somehow, we draw Rankle. The opponent actually can get a ninth point in by playing a borrower and pumping the sky cat, but we, they need to see it. They might not see it. They play the island, so this is all they have. It's awkward, right? We're exactly one creature off in the graveyard. I'm going to be subdued by the Sky Cat, the card I dissed, the card I don't like very much. I think it's fine as like a two of. I just don't, yeah, we don't need to go on about that. That's the other thing they can do, they can make the Catbird token. And we can give them, we can offer them Exaxes. Rip. I've recorded five games, but I haven't had Liliana on the battlefield. Will this be the one? Two lander on the play isn't very likely to get to four, but we give it a shot anyway. Because even if I only get to three, the demonic and grace on the Fen Lurkers could be good. Put pressure on the opponent. Maybe they deal with that. We eventually get to waker them. We eventually get to, y to rankle them. First of the day. This is mono red. We play mono red. Mono red. Mono red. Attack face till they're dead. Of course we draw the second Liliana. Of course we draw more four drops. Come on, guys. What do you think this is? You think that this is a fair and balanced shuffler? You think that this thing was designed with any intent whatsoever, other than just clumping and screwing over the magic players? You know very well the situation. As the opponent draws two Fervent Champions, which, of course, is the god draw, you can't beat it. It's the dumbest thing ever that they even designed the cards this way. I absolutely hate this design idea that a card is absolute trash. Unless you have two, then it's unbeatable. Like, I, um, Thieves Guild Enforcer is one that's like that, but... I think easily the worst, the absolute worst violator is Fervent Champion. That card should just not be this way. It's so stupid. It should have to pump knights that are not Fervent Champion. So we need to get some cards in the graveyard to use Liliana, Waker of the Dead, the way we need to use it. So I might actually block one of these just so that if I top deck a land, Liliana can kill a Fervent Champion. And we did do it. So I could attack with Rankle, make the opponent sacrifice a creature. They might sacrifice this and make two creatures. Am I better off playing Liliana and minusing it to kill a Fervent Champion? Probably. Then we block something with a Fen Lurker. Liliana probably dies. The next Liliana can kill the Annex. We still have to deal with all these tokens. I have no idea how we're going to do that. Ooh. Do they have Embercleave? We could try knocking out an Embercleave. Okay, I'm going to do that. Bone Crusher. It's also pretty good. Are you... The 
Shuffler is a load of garbage, and whoever designed it should be banished from the land. Get the drip, Liliana. One more grudge for the list. You wish you had a fraction of my power. Yep. They only get one token because it's a minus X minus X, but we're still pretty much dead. Two fervent champions came down on turn one and turn two and destroyed us. I don't, I can't take it anymore. I can't. I don't want to play with you. I don't want to ever play with you. Nobody wants to play with you. Just go away forever. All right, this, this hand could do something. All right, Pell Collector. I like the mono green matchup, so this this it's gonna be okay. The red got the salt going. I hate it so much. Why don't or can I tell you? But this this is gonna be all right. Of course, when they discarded a troll, they had to have another. Uh, let's save this. We might want to block to defend Liliana. We might get to block something larger. Speaking of larger. Come at me, bro. This might be just hug, attack, and attack. Just 20 of them. There is a lot of reach in these decks, but maybe Liliana can remove a stone coil or something. Opponent might be thinking something along the lines of attack with troll if I block, then this goes to a 3-3, then they ram through, or... That's obnoxious. That messes up my graveyard plan. I don't know if they're going to bother getting rid of... Um... I don't know if they're going to bother getting rid of my lands from the graveyard, but we'll see. Hug it out, buddy. Okay, big brain knows knows to play around my Liliana. That's special. They have to eat their own troll from the graveyard. They can make it so the Regisaur takes them to one. Liliana's plus isn't very good with ooze out either. It gives their graveyard more fodder, but that is mana intensive and it's not gonna outrace three hits from the Regisaur. It might outrace two. That's annoying. That makes me angry. Took away my hug. You frickin' jerk. Always have it. Always frickin' have it. But, are they gonna block the dino? Let's find out. They're gonna hold back. Hmm. Ooh, that could mess you up. But then I lose the Liliana. Right now Liliana can come down and do a minus one. Oh, this is sad. Maybe I do want the Regisaur to go so I can keep the Liliana. Let's see what they do when I attack. If this survives the turn. Um, oh man. Oh man. I don't want to lose Lily. Maybe I'll just draw another. The Scrybug works for me, right? Now if these both die and I kill the Ooze, actually, then we're in a pretty good spot. Okay. Okay. We can play the Liliana, kill the Ooze. And then we're Liliana against empty board and we have a rat. And we have a removal spell in hand. But if they have a questing beast, this is a disaster. I was bored anyway. Come 
Come on, man. What a load of sh It's gonna be one of those days. How many questing beasts are in your hand if you're not playing follow-ups? Alright, 5-5 five, five stone coil seems good. This is... God, I'm mad about that game. I'm so upset. Four good wins, three pitiful losses. Can we turn it around? Let's give it a shot. The disfigure is really fun to kill the turn one awesome plays everybody has. It's just a turn one format. You have to do stuff on turn one. Opponent's sitting on a stone coil serpent. Ooh, and we did draw the two drops. So I thought about holding on to the disfigure, and I decided to just fire it off because I might draw a two drop. We have a lot in the deck and rewarded. We did. All right, so do we go for Dino Hug? It didn't work last time. We could go for Demon Hug, and if the opponent has Gem Razor, we get it on the board, but yeah. Let's just go straight to the Dino. Make, like, last game they had frickin' everything. We know they have a Stone Coil. Maybe we can clear that up. The last game was so perfect. They had the right proportion of Gem Razor, Questing Beast, and Scavenging Ooze to make sure that we couldn't win. They, will they have it again? I don't think so. I think we'll be okay. We'll discard the land. We'll hug the dino. And now you've got one turn. Do something about it. Okay, two life. They always have life gain, too. How do they do this? How do they always do it? I don't know. Teach me your ways. All right, we need two more points of damage. Another embrace would do it. Put the gutter bones in the yard. Hello. <laughs> uh, yeah, no mana to activate anything. You get in there, too, buddy. All right, got lucky. I feel better about life. That's how magic works. Let's take my good luck as a reflection of my absolute ability and then put a smile back on my face. We're playing against Simic Flash again. It's a rematch and our hand looks just like last time, but there are no Liliana um, triumphs, so we're in a much worse position. We'll have to draw those. They were really good last time against the Ambushers. Mulligan, dude. You know you're no match for mono black? Yes. Now mulligan again. Again, I'd say. Oh. Well, I guess they found a growth spiral. Let's put it to the test. Van Lurkums. Say goodbye to something. All right, this started and they discarded a land, not an ambusher. When they discarded an ambusher last time, I was like, oh, this, is good. this game could be rough. But not this time. Burglar Rat? Yeah, let's try to play that and Gutter Bones. Let's attack first, though. What you got? Okay, How about this. Borrower. Hmm. I like that for a turn two play way better than a gross spiral. And discard an Uro. Alright, we have to keep in mind if we embrace something that the borrower can block it. But I think we still want to. Do we still want to? What do we want dead? I guess we don't. So the opponent's probably going to play a borrower this turn. 
Let's attack with our creatures. Pump the Fen Lurker. Opponent might play another Borrower here. No? Alright. And Gutter Bones. I'm hoping the opponent plays the Borrower and attacks with it, so that casting my Demonic Embrace can be a real threat. Like, that it can actually hit the opponent. So I'm kind of banking on them attacking with this Borrower. Ooh, they missed a land drop. Okay. They had to Uro for it. You love it. Oh, uh, go back to that forest they discarded. Feels so good. All right, they are playing around the Embrace. How about that? But that's a good draw, isn't it? It Yes, it is. Opponent is no fool. Let's hold the land. What you got? They're not going to sweep me. So let's see them get out of this one. Nice cat and mouse around the embrace there. On the draw, this is this hand is far from great, but I think we try it. Just try to let the dinosaur do its thing. Shadow Spear. Okay, that could be good for us if we draw removal and keep the opponent's creatures off the board. Whoa, so the opponent's playing a weird deck and it's so far card disadvantage, disadvantageous. So if we keep their hand empty, like, and remove a few of their threats, like these aren't really cards you want. So I, I guess we'll see what happens. I don't know what I'm in for here, Harbinger. Expert from black located. Somebody's bigger. We'll see if the opponent has a way to get around or through the Regis. So our green has removal spells now, which is not something I'm used to, but it is the truth. Drop off one of these lands. We have a Liliana's Triumph, so we should attack first to see if the opponent is willing to block. They might go for a double block here. That would be a blowout. And they do not. Pretty smart. All right. Play a second rat. Make the opponent discard something. Play this. Probably play a Liliana's Triumph. They'll give up their Yorvo, I think. So what I think we'll see is the Shadow Spear get equipped to the Harbinger to try to draw a card. Because that's how they're going to recoup card advantage. And I think I should let my opponent block with Yorvo. They're not going to block with Yorvo. That's rough. Let's see what they sacrifice. I'm sure it will be the Yorvo. And no point in blocking this, it tramples. We could try to absorb a little bit of it and the opponent wouldn't get to dig as deep, but what can you do? Oof, oh, that card. Okay, come on, draw a removal spell one time. Thank you, I appreciate that. So we could draw a card with the castle, we'll just end up discarding it to the dinosaur, unless the opponent kills the dinosaur. But I think the dinosaur has to stay and block the Harbinger now. So we could do an extra point of damage with the Fen Lurker instead. And I'm pretty much banking that the opponent's not going to kill this. So, but I don't think it's worth one point of damage. I think we do hold up the castle in case they do kill it, because then we're really scrambling if they play Primal Might. Just smash my Regisaur. I've got a second Harbinger. Okay, it looks like a standoff. Fen Lurker. Let's get your last card at least. 
The opponent could have discarded it and tried to uh, hit a one mana creature. Maybe they have those. Interesting standoff with another mono green deck, but this one is funky. This one has weird tools. Okay, land off the top. We can pump these to three. We can't pump them to four. Let's see what we draw. Maybe it's a playable. It is. Get butter bones on the field. The opponent gets to use an arc bow. But they don't. <sighs> Groan. All right, come on now. This is where Liliana is supposed to be doing work, but no, no, she does not. Liliana just doesn't show up. Oh, Rankle. Yeah, God, where's Rankle right now? Come on, Rankle. I'm losing a game I should be able to win because you didn't show. All right, I guess I have to take that hit because if I give up my Regisaur, I lose. I'm deeply annoyed. Deeply annoyed. Deeply, deeply annoyed. What a load of garbage this game has been. All right, let's uh, do things up. Pump the wrong one. Good, good stuff, CGB. Um, just dead. Whatever. <laughs> so bad. So bad. Removal on the draw, so we keep. That's why. So do we take this hit? I at least wait to see if they play a Robber of the Rich. I can try to trade the Fen Lurker for the Spitter, so I don't think I disfigure it. I think I disfigure the Steamkin or the Robber. Yep. It is Mono Red. They play Mono Red. Attack face till I'm dead. This is where Liliana's Triumph looks really stupid. Actually, I mean, the card's had its moments today, but it should be Grasp of Darkness pretty much all day. To be honest, is that a shield breaker? Somebody hates Cat Oven. Hates it. All right, would you like to attack me? Oh my gosh, they did. <laughs> well, nobody expects Liliana's triumph. Roar! Um, I mean, I could just, just give them the dino hug. I don't think they can kill me in two turns. Forget removing their stuff. Give them the dino hug. Cool, dude. It's a good curve, but there's no removal, so it makes me nervous. Jug on the sup. Probably about to get torn up by sacrifice a bit. I hear claim the firstborn's a card. It's one of those things where you have to like knock stuff out of their hand, then maybe dino hug them. But it's ugly. It's not good. I mean, that's a card. Everything about them is horrible. Um, if I play one of these, the butcher can two for one. If 
but I guess that's better than the alternative, which is to do nothing and tr hope to trade my gutter bones. Give up an oven? Sure. It's weird, this is the first Rakdos I've played today. So this is a sort of a two for one, but remember this already traded for a card, a witch's oven to be precise, and we can get our gutter bones back, so I think it's a fine deal. Weird that they'd play the Judith Post. I guess it doesn't really matter if their play is what they did the way that they played it. Six land though, come on guys. Come on, that's messed up at this point. Yeah, no blocks. And we knew they had another oven. I thought they'd have another cat, but I guess not. Timurette might be good. All right, Rankle. We're gonna get the last card out of their hand. If we make them sacrifice the Butcher, they can kill the Rankle with it. If they block here with the Butcher, then they can deal three to the Rankle as well, so that's not good. Yep. It is what it is. I need to hang on to this to possibly get my gutter bones. So I'm trying to hang on. Alright, last card? Nope. Is there a cat down here? No. But I might want to play Timrit and play around Call of the Death Dweller rather than get my gutter bones right now. Let's yell at them a bit. Timurit might really matter here. What is that last card? I had a feeling it might be a claim. It always is, right? It always is. And now they have a cat. And we are back for a post-game wrap-up, and I think we've succeeded in making a mono-black Liliana Waker of the Dead discard theme deck as good as we can be, but this is the rare video where I think I gave you a deck that's actually pretty bad in the meta. Um, I was trying really hard to make a card work, and the behind the scenes is when I'm getting a deck ready for YouTube, I go out on ladder. I usually I start recording right away because I never know how it will going to be how it's going to go. But if I have like a terrible record after four or five games, if I'm like one and four or two and three, like I delete that deck and I delete that footage and I don't bother showing that deck because I don't want to show you a deck that sucks. This deck this doesn't happen often, but I think I tricked myself into making this video because this deck won the first several games, was feeling all right, but as soon as the real meta showed up as soon as I had to deal with Mono Red, as soon as I had to deal with Simic Ramp, and as soon as I had to deal with Rakdos, I got thrashed. Also, Mono Green put me in my place, but that matchup is close. That matchup's kind of interesting. There's a lot going on in that matchup. These rats are really bad. It has a lot to do with play and draw, I think. Um, but that matchup's in at least interesting. The Rakdos matchup and the Red matchup are not great. It feels like red should be better. It just wasn't today. Maybe that was bad luck. But um, yeah, I can't recommend this deck for ladder. It is, I think, as close as you get to a discard deck that does work. So I don't... You could change the Liliana's Triumphs for Grasp of Darkness. I really felt the pain of having the opponent sit there with like a Grazer or a 1-1 Lovestruck Beast token and just laugh at this card. And we have another sacrifice effect in Rankle. So this probably shouldn't be there. But I don't have a lot of other changes to suggest. If you want to get into other colors, you can play a Croxa build, but that has the same problems. Very little board presence. Late in the game, you might make a 6-6 six, six Titan, or you might just be dead because you spent your time making the opponent discard cards instead of, I don't know, 
winning the game or getting stuff on the board. So uh, I do think that this is fine for what it is, but I don't recommend it for ladder. So that uh, just kind of hangs around 50% and some very infuriating top deck wars. There's nothing better than making the opponent discard all their cool cards and just have them top deck haymaker after haymaker after haymaker to make you feel like your life has no meaning. <laughs> But let's just forget about that, because as soon as we hit play again, everything gets better. So uh, shout out to the Cool Kids Club. Thank you for watching this uh, little bit of a train wreck of a video. Love you very much, uh, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.